Welcome back to my channel! Today we're talking about Disney on Ice. So if you haven't already guessed, this weekend was Disney on Ice. Hey everyone, it's Editing Trent, and this was actually filmed a couple weeks ago. And uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's dig right on in. Now, before we get started, this is my second Disney on Ice that I've reviewed. However, this channel is not exclusively Disney on Ice material. Generally, with this channel, we review Disney movies, Marvel reviews, Star Wars reviews. Also, I have a secret for you. This channel turns you into a bonafide Disney fan. So, if you want to click that button, I suggest you do it. And you'll be officially in the Disney fan club. Except you really won't because I'm not affiliated with Disney at all. So let's get going. Recently, I have become a teacher, which means I am flush with money right now. Last time I went to Disney on Ice, I wasn't even able to park in the right parking lot. This time, I was able to. I had that money because teachers have lots of money, right? Now, the second perk we were able to partake in was a character meet and greet called Storytime with Belle. You come in, you sit down, they give you chips. It's basically like a tea time with Belle. She has a little maid there. The maid kind of welcomes you in. Then each kid gets to spend a little bit of dedicated time with Belle. And then Mickey Mouse comes in right at the very end. Uh, I definitely recommend that, especially if you live someplace where you can't get to Disney World very often. Then as we walked in, the adventures of the single dad began. We had to go find our seat, first of all. And finding our seat, we'd already gotten all of this accumulation of stuff. I had my tickets in my pocket. They were in the wrong pocket, carrying all of this crap. To drop it all to get my ticket out. We went in the top row, and then we climbed over the chairs, because we didn't want to have to make everyone stand up. We kind of made a ruckus anyway. Two saintly moms right next to me. They were helping me carry my stuff. Thank you if you're either of those two moms. Some snacks came back and the show was ready to start. Aladdin was the very first segment. Thank you, kind sir. We'll get to a few little uncanny valley things that happened, but we didn't have anything that nearly amounted to the, like, creepiness of Mr. Potato Head with his hands hanging out from behind his ears. <laughs> The theme of the, the whole night was dreams. And dreams in regard particularly to Disney princesses. So we just saw really quick snippets of each of them. Right away, we start off with Aladdin, which to some degree kind of... <laughs> I was kind of wondering why everyone was the certain ethnicity that they were. I give it a bit of a pass though, doing broad amounts of different types of shows. And I did notice that uh, there were people of different ethnicities out there. Plus that Aladdin had this little stick <laughs> that I thought was hilarious. So the stick was Abu. And every time Abu would talk, he would move the stick like this. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was just the joy to watch. From the very from the very first scene, both Aladdin and Jasmine both were much more covered up like the characters in the theme parks are now. Uh because recently like there was a wardrobe change for the characters and the theme parks so that they didn't show as much skin. But as soon as that disguise came off, Jasmine had the bare midriff and all of that. It's kind of thinking it was funny between the two of them that they had updated the outfit for Aladdin still, but they didn't update it for Jasmine. Every time I go to one of these shows, the people get younger, I swear, than these 16 year olds had these really big, fake Amish looking beards on <laughs> that, that just added a ton to the comedy. <laughs> Amish on ice. To add insult to injury, they were the guards, so they had the big fake beards on <laughs> that like the most pristine hairless bear chests that I've ever seen. It was a sight to behold. When the genie comes out, he was pretty well done. Um, I always am really freaked out by a really plastic fake smile. Eventually it looks really aggressive to me. <laughs> like, constantly. Um, 
a little bit nightmare fuelish there. <laughs> not not a big fan. My daughter actually brought this up. Last time she wouldn't sing. Um, asked her if she wanted to sing, and she said no. And then I I asked her why she didn't want to sing, and she said, well, because you're not supposed to. And she's right. <laughs> Most like Broadway shows, you're not supposed to sing at. And I think that's what makes this experience so innocent and beautiful is <laughs> you you can't rival the amount of shoddiness and the amount of extreme uh, denial of any kind of reality and part of the suspension of disbelief for these shows is just simply that uh, there there are no rules at Disney on Ice you can talk you can sing you can dance you can get up in the aisles whatever you want to do that's what makes it fun and uh, that that becomes a huge part of its theatricality Moana was a beautiful example of putting something onto ice that was very beautiful. Again, though, we had Maui. He is a sight to behold. In the Disney animated feature, he works so well uh, to look like he matches uh, The Rock's voice. <laughs> he does not match The Rock's voice at all in this. This was much more simplified. Um, you had one huge thing that was about three stories tall with a backdrop of a sunset. And Moana comes on, um, they had a, a sailboat that came through and around the, uh, the ice rink. And you had projectors down on the ice also to make it look like water. At one point, you saw a guy dressed in black come around and he uh, put, must have been some sort of flammable substance down on the ice. And then this huge, like, flame popped up for the symbolization of the monster in Moana. Uh, the girl playing Moana was beautiful. She looked like maybe she was of some sort of ethnicity <laughs> that wasn't just European. But the amount to which they used color and light to create this drama uh, was really nice. And the same thing happened on The Little Mermaid. Prince Eric and all the little sailor boys. Just, I've never seen a younger group of boys. I'm such an old man. Get off my lawn. Then came the worst part of this show. <laughs> Flounder. Flounder is the single-handedly worst part of this show and completely just surgically removed my suspension of disbelief. It's, it's a fish with legs. When Ariel mentions walking on land uh, during one of her songs, he like moves his feet. <laughs> It's like, how, how much can you draw attention to the fact that this fish has feet? Is this an evolutionary thing? It's beyond my understanding why they did that. A puppet would have been so much better. Disney is so good with puppets. More to do than can ever be done. Why did they not do a puppet? Like, it's the dumbest thing. The Ursula was very cartoony, and I liked that way better than the other iterations I've seen, like, Queen Latifah playing uh, Ursula recently. Part of the suspension of disbelief is that I just simply don't believe anything. And that is the aesthetic I want. After The Little Mermaid, we had intermission. During intermission, I had two experiences <laughs> that were really, really terrible. So the first one was I went out to go get some cotton candy or something sweet for my daughter. We decided we were going to get the slushies that looked really great and they had like a ball of ice this big on the top of them. Looks good, we'll do that. We'll do the slushy balls. As soon as I got it back to our seat, it had congealed together into this ice block that I had to pick at with a plastic spoon. There were people all around me, and as I was hitting it, it was like much more of it was going onto my leg than was ever getting into my mouth. There was a guy right down below me, and I'm real sorry for that guy. I'm afraid that I was constantly hitting him with little chunks of ice just for like a good solid 10 minutes.
Sir, if you watch this video, I'm sorry. By the time we got it all apart, I was taking little bits and pieces that I could get off and like feeding my daughter like she was a five-year-old toddler. It was not a good experience. Zero out of 10 would not recommend. Uh, but then I got in line with my daughter the second night and I was going to get some uh, cotton candy. And these cotton candies have crowns that were way too big for my daughter. And everybody loves Mickey ears, especially when you're a kid. I'm think it's like a rite of passage. But there was this guy and his like five children were behind me and they all crowded in. His child was putting, this child was not a like, not like a three-year-old child. This child was like a 10-year-old child putting his head on my back like this and like rubbing his head back and forth. So first of all, weird. Secondly, then he stood right behind me. If I would move forward, he would move forward like, like right up next to me and saying, oh, none of you is going to eat any cotton candy. We don't want to get cotton candy as loud as he possibly could. We just need to have the icy. And in my head, I was like, yes, yes, get the icy, get the icy. I want you to suffer. He got the cotton candy anyway, though, so... Oh, well, Coco was the very first segment. I've never seen Coco, but it, it was a good experience. It was fun to watch. Uh, the people all had skeletons on. It was fun to hear the songs, too. I'm excited to actually watch that movie because uh, that will be in this list of Disney movies ranked and reviewed. If you haven't subscribed yet, then go subscribe right up here. Sleeping Beauty, though, comes on. And Sleeping Beauty was the single most beautiful um, Disney on ice section I've seen. Uh, Sleeping Beauty was just like the aesthetic was just gorgeous. It looked so much like the movie. It had a green background. Um, green was all around. They had green fire that shot up at one time. Maleficent turns into a dragon for it for for its fight with uh, with Philip. Cinderella was beautiful also, um, very romantic looking. Again, much like the movie itself. Frozen is such a great experience for, for this Disney on Ice thing because Adina Menzel already, when she performs, she is just so over the top in everything that she does. And when she sings, she does a lot of moving her arms around like this. So overly animated with everything that she does. Disney on ice. Some of the people who were like extras during the scenes for Frozen, they were watching Elsa or Anna. Um, like when Elsa tells Anna that, um, no, shut the gate. Close the gates which doesn't happen in real life. So obviously something here disconnected with my suspension of disbelief because I was just laughing at these characters here doing that. Um, I know I said I don't expect anything to happen that's real life. Apparently I did with Frozen. I don't know what, why I was, I don't know. I'm not sure. Now I'm contemplating my own existence. It was still a really good show. However, I have to still ask and and encourage you all to help me understand how does Olaf's head come off it happened again and this time I got it on film no 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 <laughs> am I right <laughs> I did notice during one of the showings that there was like a slit right where the head w was. And this time it didn't look like the slit must have, it must not have closed all the way. So I wonder if it's just like a, a girl and like usually she's kind of up like this. Her head stays up above that slit a little bit. This just goes like that. And her head is covered and she's just moving around like this. That's possible. Overall, this Disney on Ice was I'm going to say a very much a step up from last year. Um, it was much better. It wasn't as shoddy. It wasn't as goofy. Um, it wasn't as much of a cringe fest as last year. Last year, there was a lot of stuff that I just felt really cringy about. This year, it was genuinely an enjoyable experience. It felt like going to one of the theme parks um, and going to 
uh, story time with Belle was another huge part of that. It just was um, a, an added perk that I'm very glad that we sprung for, although I don't know that I would spring for it again. It was $40 per person to go to that, and uh, that's quite a bit more then I think it's really worth. It's like going to the parks and doing one thing and paying just 40 bucks for that. I don't know. I don't know, now that I think about it, I'd probably do that. Yeah, I'd probably do that. <laughs> if I had that option, I would do that. Um, <laughs> I'm such a sucker for Disney. Leave your comments down in the comment section, comment box, whatever it's called, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. See ya.